With players like Lissandro Martinez, Casemiro, Luke Shaw and Mason Mount coming back from injury, I think there is real possibilities that Manchester United could finish inside the top four. And also with the right transfer window in the summer, I believe that Ten Hag's crew could lift the Premier League trophy. You probably think, how can you solve to say this? Because Manchester United have played so terribly bad this season, uh, but yeah, before you click off the video and call me crazy, let me explain. It's believed that Ten Hag is trusted by the new owner, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, and if he could be in a top four race and also do pretty well in the FA Cup, he will most likely stay through the summer transfer window. And that means that he will get the full support of Ineos and Sir Jim Ratcliffe. But now, going back he needs to survive until the summer. And we know that Ineos and Ratcliffe won't make any major moves in the January transfer window. So how can he stay up in a top four race with the current squad? As I mentioned, we have finally got some very, very important news that um, some of our most important players last season is coming back. And I believe that uh, with those players coming back and if Manchester United can find the winning rhythm, and hopefully that can start against Tottenham tomorrow. So let's talk about the main topic of today's video and also look at the current squad of Manchester United and what changes need to be done for this Manchester United side to be a title uh, title side next season. So yeah, here is the Manchester United squad when everyone is fit. To the left side there is the starter, to the right side it is the backup. I hope that makes sense. And yeah, starting in goal we have Unana, of course Bayern Deer will be back up, but let's be honest, he doesn't get any minutes at Manchester United. And um, at left back we have Luke Shaw with Malasia as the backup. In defense we have Martinez and Rafael Veran with Evans and Maguire as backup players. At right back we have Dalot and Bambisaka. I think Dalot should be the main man, but one thing to keep in mind is that when Luke Shaw is fit, he tends to go on runs inside in midfield, so Manchester United play a three at the back formation, right, uh, like this. But now, when Luke Shaw has been injured, Dalot has gotten that job, and he has been incredible with it. But when Manchester United play three at the back when attacking, I think actually Van Bissaka could be a better player than Dalot, because um, he is a better defensive um, right back, in my opinion. Uh, and moving into the midfield, we have Casemiro and Amrabat as backup, and we have Mainu and Eriksen as backup. I haven't haven't taken uh, McTominay into consideration because he almost played nothing last season, and I have no idea why so many people are blaming Ten Hag. Which player should he play uh, instead of Scott McTominay? Like Eriksen have been injured for such a long period of time. The same with Casemiro. Um, Amrabat hasn't been good enough, let's be honest, and he has also been. Um, a lot injured at the club, and also Hannibal Meibri is a good uh, rotation player, but he isn't good enough yet. Uh, so I don't understand that take by so many uh, newsletters and the United stand. I don't understand it, uh, to be honest. Um, and yeah, he isn't good enough, let's just be honest, but he is the best one we currently have when Eriksen, when Casemiro is injured, in my opinion. Um, but moving on to the attack, we have Ganacho and Rashford. I think it's so important that uh, Garnaccio can play more left wing because uh, he has had some good games against Aston Villa when he played um, on the right, but I feel like he's such a bigger threat when he plays at left wing. But at the moment, um, uh, they uh, they should probably switch Garnaccio to the right and Rashford to the left. Uh, but this is just to show you what Ten Hag's real plan was before this season. Anthony and Diallo. Uh, yeah, I think this looks really good. We don't have any right wing backup besides Diallo and uh, Pelisti will probably go on loan. And offensive midfield we have Fernandes and Mason Mount. In attack we have Heilun and Martial. Um, yeah, and talking about uh, Ten Hag's strategy is often to press high and win the ball back. But uh, we see often when Manchester United play uh, worst opponent, for example uh, Nottingham Forest and we control the game or West Ham. Uh, Manchester United tends to don't uh, do too well because Manchester United are known for their counter-attacking football. But uh, I will also some, uh, show some examples uh, soon. Uh, but like the Ten Hag um, strategy, you can call it, is uh, Manchester United have one like box-to-box -box midfielder. 
and that could be, for example, in this occasion, Eriksen. Let's say Eriksen, he tends to play on the left, um, and when Manchester United attack, it tends to look like this, and then, uh, let me just make this, and then Luke Shaw tends to go in the middle, here, and then Martinez, uh, Veran or Maguire in the center, and then Dalot or Van Bissaka to the right. Of course, this may change if there are injuries to the team, but um, it's like it's look a little bit like what Leicester does in the championship. The only difference is that, like, I don't understand uh, some of the runs Smash Knight makes because it looks like uh, Ten Hag wants the left wing and the right wing to be one and one with the left back or the right back of uh, another team. So. Manchester United often tends to give, it, give the ball to the left wings or right wings. The only problem currently at Manchester United is that if it's Anthony, if it's Rashford, they can't pass. Like every single time they get the ball, they either pass back or when they try to dribble, they lose the ball. And it, ha it happens so many times. And that's why Haylund haven't scored more goals. And we see it that so many runs is in the box. But when, for example, I think Rashford is actually a better example using here than Anthony, but Anthony hasn't been good at all this season. When he dribbles down um, down here, then I either want him to make a cross or go inside and shoot. And like the philosophy at Manchester United, Manchester United isn't the same at Ajax. But the main goal is to overload on one side. For example, uh, set up Anthony or Rashford one we one against uh, the right back or the left back, and then either uh, take um, a cutback pass. And I will also show you some examples now, actually, so it's um, easier to understand. Um, yeah, here we can see that we have uh, what I talked about. We have Dallo and Kubi Mainu. We have Bruno Fernandes and Scott McTominay. And then we have Heilun. We have Rashford and Garnacho. I think, um, yeah, uh, like as I mentioned before, we can see that we play three, two, two, both winners, of course. So it will look like a three. 2-4-1, and against Wigan it uh, worked pretty okay, I think. Here we can see Veran plays directly to, um, to Garnacho, and then we can see that Garnacho goes inside, and he goes for a shot that was very close, and that is just an example of how Manchester United tends to build up the play. I don't know why Scott McTominay makes that run, because um, like, I think ideally um, Garnacho wants to be one and one against the left back. So if Scott McTominay makes another run inside here instead, like uh, Garnacho gets uh, more space. But I think it's a very good run of uh, Aaron Van Bissaka here, running in here. And I think, I don't know why my new just stops here, because the number 10, um, if my new also makes the run in here, um, the number 10 needs to follow him, and then Garnacho gets even more plays to take off a shot. I think my new played wonderful, but that is something I don't know why he why he just stands there. That doesn't make sense to me. If you see number 37, because then um, number 10 uh, can be able to stand this ground. Uh, but um, yeah, let's show the next example. And yeah, believe it or not, it's so hard to find a clip where United actually score a goal by uh, like building the play up. Uh, but as I mentioned in the last clip, that is like the philosophy for Ten Hag to set up his right wingers and left wingers. And it's the same as Leicester, but especially Rashford have, isn't good enough at the moment to um, uh, go against the defender. And like in many, many cases, the wingers of Manchester United, Manchester United just pass the ball back. And also um, in midfield, I don't feel like the runners often make the best decisions. Um, like going for smart runs and etc. as I showed you in the last clip. But here's an example of Manchester United pressing and winning the ball back. This was against Nottingham Forest. And um, this is an example of something Ten Hag wants to implement at United. Very, very intelligent by Garnacho. And this ends up with being a goal. And this looks very simple. It looks like a mistake from the goalkeeper. But this is incredible from Alejandro Garnacho and also from the coaching staff. Because Manchester United are some of the teams in the league that creates the most, uh, not creates the most chances, but wins the ball uh, the most in the attacking uh, attacking play. And I think uh, this just shows uh, that. And unfortunately, 
Um, in many cases, Manchester United win the ball high up, but don't do anything with the ball. Uh, so yeah, uh, if I were Ten Hag and if I could make signings in the summer transfer window, I would go all out in attack. Sign new wingers, sign new forwards, because at the moment there are such uh, few competitions in the attacking spots. For example, uh, on the wings, like Anthony isn't near good enough at the moment to play um, on the right wing. And the same up, up top, Heilun haven't scored in, he has scored like one goal in 12 games or something in the English competitions, and that isn't good enough. And that's why he needs a backup striker that is good and can learn him how to score more goals. And that sounds very simple, and that sounds like I'm a Heilun hater, I'm not a Heilun hater, but it was the same at Atalanta. He isn't the goal scorer Manchester United need. Like, we have seen this so many times, he's an incredible player and he's a young talent, but we need a better goal scorer. So, some of my dream signings would be Guirassi for £15 million. Incredible if you can get him. Ulisse will be one of the most expensive ones. And if we will be able to get him, I think we will uh, smash it. And also Julman or Endrik. Endrik is a Brazilian uh, playing at Atalanta. Uh, very, very good with the ball. And I think him besides Casemiro or Mainu could be very, very good because he's a very good transition player as well and a perfect player for Ten Hag. And also Julman is also a Danish midfielder currently playing at um, Sporting. He played before in the uh, Serie A at um, Lecce. So he's a really good player as well. And I would also upgrade a little bit in defense because we know Veran gets a lot injured, so Todibu could be a very good option there as well. And I honestly believe that this team can potentially win the Premier League next season. And I'm not even joking, like I believe it, but the chance of United getting those four signings I think is, isn't the best. But like just looking at the attack, we have like why does it say Endrik there? Like I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to type him there. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I meant to say Endrik here. I thought, oh my god, there he is. Look at this twat. Look at this, Pratt. Um, but my point being is that Gurassi, I think he has scored like 17 goals in 15 matches. He is 27 years old and he has, um, he's a very bargain in my opinion, only 15 million pounds for him. And I think that could be one of the best signings Manchester United could do this summer and also this January transfer window actually, because Manchester United can, can afford it. And I think that partnership could be very, very fun to see. And in the left wing, I think we hold it with Ganacho and Rashford. But this time, like, if Rashford is going to stay at Manchester United, he needs to beat Ganacho. He will have competition against Ganacho. Because now he gets away with playing bad because Ganacho just moves to the right. I think we should have Ulisse and Anthony on the right wing. And then Anthony also needs competition, especially in the right wing slot. Because last season, he almost, uh, he didn't get job almost every single game, he played almost every single game and um, also when he had like three or four games besides um, after each other uh, with bad performances he still got a new chance every single time by Ten Hag and we are Manchester United, it's unaccept unacceptable and in midfield, I th uh, the cam spot I'm in, I think we just keep the same Fernandes, incredible and we have, he's the club captain and we have Mason Mount as a backup Mason Mount as a backup, don't play Mason Mount at a CDM spot. Here we want to see Casemiro, Hulman or Endrik. Or actually, to be honest, I think Endrik uh, could be a very, very interesting player besides Casemiro. So if we signed Endrik, he could be, it could be potentially be Mainu and Endrik. I think that actually sounds better uh, if oh we change God. it here. And this oh, is... Hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Get your ass on, my, my, my dream. Uh, lineup. We have Shaw, Shaw and Malasia. I think Shaw is one of the best left backs in the world, and we have Malasia as a backup. We spent a lot on him, so uh, he's uh, he's good enough to be a backup. Martinez and Evans. Uh, we could potentially get a new left back, left uh, footed centre back, but I don't think we're in a hurry here. I think Evans did a very, very good, very, very good job when um, when he got the opportunity, and I think. Uh, uh, Martinez have have like he had in his career he has had like two big injuries and both of them has uh, happened in the same time in Manchester United, so he isn't a player that is a lot injured. 
Uh, I think that was his first injury in, in his entire career. Uh, that was because he got so overplayed last season. And um, I think he will be incredible. Uh, so we stick with those. And we also have Veran and Todibo. Uh, sell Scott McTominay, sell Maguire. Sell, although Maguire have had a very good season, I want to sell him. Um, Dalon and Misak at the right back slot. I think those two are way, way good enough for that. And also we have Onana in goal. I believe in him. And I think this team could potentially win the title. And I'm not even joking. Um, and especially do very, very well in a title, be a big title contender. Um, because when you look at this team, it gives me excitement. And uh, <laughs> what do you think? Am I talking crap? Or do you think Manchester United could be title contenders again? And let's be realistic. Like, this is the best scenario if it happens next season. And let's be honest, for it to happen, a lot of things needs to change inside the football club as well. Many players need to go, the toxic environment needs to be fully rid of. And I think Sir Jim Ratcliffe is the man for the job, and I think he has a plan. And we will probably find that out by time. And yeah, my name has been Nusalda, and I will see you next one. Bye bye, and take care. Peace.